Well, I'm Luther Kruger with the Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking, based out of Minneapolis. And I'm in uh, Northern California, the ranch of Stan and Christy Wells, which is just chock full of solar stuff, solar cookers, solar trackers, uh, solar powered water and so forth. And we're going to have a little tour in a bit, but we're going to start off with uh, one of Stan's claim to fame, the uh, Fortawati here. Uh, yeah, it uh, gives a brief history of it. Uh, how it works and sure yeah uh, this it started out we uh, I play in the, in the band and we had a gig working in a vineyard and we needed something to power the PA system and it wasn't this one it was a, I, I took a hand truck and a, and a battery and a inverter that converts 12 volt uh, power into 120 volt AC and a solar panel and uh, we powered our we powered our uh, PA system all day long and it worked just fine with it's just a little portable thing you could wheel around sweet after i got done with that i brought it up here and found it to be just a really handy device to have around we had uh, available 110 volt ac wherever i needed it all over the ranch this is a what they become uh, this is a new modern version that's a smaller version it doesn't have any 120 volts or anything but it'll it'll charge your iPad. It'll charge your phone. If I if I show you, if I just moved it a little bit, it'll. Well, it's stuck. It'll doesn't like that. But it'll automatically find the sun all by itself. It was hung up on the deck boards sure. there, but uh, yeah, it tracks the sun and and uh, keeps the these uh, batteries here. I mean, these solar panels here charge a battery inside. The little solar panels around the outside are what sense the sun and keep it aimed at the sun all, all the time. Okay. And how does that work? Is it like a like one's in shade and it moves one way and so forth? Or The, the way it works is these, these panels here <laughs> and these panels here are playing a sort of a tug of war. Mm -hmm. One of them wants to pull the, the thing one way and one of them wants to pull the other way. So if this one has the most sun, it's going to go that way. If the other one does, it'll go the other way. When they both have the equal amount of sun, it'll stop, and that means it's pointing right at the sun. Okay, and that then the top ones do the same thing for the for the, the tilt. Yes, it's a dual axis tracker. Okay, and when did uh, it occur to you to apply this to solar cookers? Well, it, it was actually the solar cookers that got me involved in the track. Okay. It's the other way around, okay. and it was and and we had a solar cooker for thirty years, and it was the, the sun flash, which is how you and I sure. came to know each other. And it didn't need a tracker. It was easy to turn, easy to tilt. And then uh, just recently, we got the All-American Sun oven. And uh, that's easy enough to turn, but it is not easy to tilt. I found it to be very cumbersome. So I, she, Christy was getting ready to make us a batch of biscuits. So I ran off in the garage and I took two pieces of plywood and put a hinge in between them and a little device to adjust the angle. And before she had the big biscuits ready to go i had we had a turntable that was just sitting on the table there lazy susan you know mm -hmm. and i stuck it on the lazy susan and i had the angle and before, i had it ready for her before she came out with the biscuits and it made the sun oven so much easier to use just that just just that alone and i got to looking at it thinking hmm i might be able to make a motor do that and uh, that's how i got started well, and uh, you mentioned the sun flash, and you see we got the yeah, yeah. right here. I was so enamored with the sun flash that I said, I want to try to build one. And uh, it wasn't completely successful, but I took that. This is on a lazy Susan, so it turns real easy. It's real easy to aim. Uh, and it cooks almost as good as the sun flash. Sure. And we'll, in our tour later, we'll uh, maybe pull out the actual the original sun Yeah, yeah. We'll look at that, too. Um, okay, well, anything else? Uh, uh, no worry about, about this. this. Let's see. It, it went, went through a lot of uh, gyrations when I built it. It, it doesn't like bumps in the deck. deck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll show, show you the other side of it if you want to see it. There's a, sure. It's, it's got, got the on-off switch. switch. This, this will tell me what how much uh, power is in the in the voltage. voltage. Oh, this, oh, this wasn't turned on. on. We probably weren't getting charged. Anyway, and this is a USB outlet and a 12 volt outlet. You, you put, put your, your iPad, iPad right in here so it's not in the sun, sun while it's charging up. Yep. And it uh, works pretty very good. Well, it, 
it, it finds its spot really quick. Yeah, yeah it doesn't like this uneven deck, deck very yeah. much. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, it works. Okay. Well, uh, let's move over to the sun oven, which All right. is yeah. some of the tractors. So now we're at the sun oven on the tracker that Stan put together. Describe how how you decided to do make the choices you did for setting this up. All right. Well, um, after I built that first little angle adjuster for the sun oven, I wanted to automate it. I I was starting out from where I started from, which was sitting on a turntable. And having a tilt on sitting on a turntable, so I built a powered turntable, and I built a powered tilt, and a, and a sensor like this, and hooked it all together. It took a lot of trials and tribulations, and trying different size things, and different size motors, and different size solar panels, and I finally got it working, and that evolved a little bit more and turned into this. This is without the turntable because I put I finally figured out I could just put the, the wheels underneath the tilt and not have to have two things to carry around, and and uh, much simpler, much lighter. And, uh, less expensive to build sure so this is the most elaborate one I've built it, it not only will track the Sun but it'll also maintain a low temperature if you want to dry uh, herbs and things like that uh, I can I can sort of uh, illustrate what that would be like what it'll do when I go into that mode it will when it reaches uh, the temperature we want we want to stay at it'll turn about 90 degrees and 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 not be facing the Sun anymore until it cools down a little bit and then it'll turn back into the Sun uh, we're not going to do that for very long because we're baking lasagna right yep. now. But I can kind of just show you. I'm going to what over here. You'll these see. are the controls. This is. Can you see? Oh, can you see that over here? here? I'll pull this over. These are the these are the tilt controls right here, and these are the rotation controls. So up means the sun is controlling the tilt. Up means the sun is controlling the rotation. If I want to manually control something to tweak it, I can I can turn it a little bit like that. With these manual buttons when i want to go on to temperature control i want to turn off the tilt because i don't want it trying to find the ultimate tilt when i'm deliberately block you know going away from the sun sure. so i'm going to just, just temporarily turn off the tilt and i'm going to turn on the temperature control now it's hot right now so it's going to turn 90 degrees uh, away from the sun it'll turn a little bit and then it'll stop and it'll turn a little bit and then it'll stop. Here it goes again. Sure. So I'm going to just uh, turn that back off now and let it reverse. So what would happen normally if I was doing this kind of cooking or baking? I would have it, it would be over here for long enough to cool off and then it would revert back to its normal tracking position. So I'm going to just jump the gun and revert right back. Sure. Turn back on sun controlled tilt and we're back to tracking again now. Just to demonstrate how that would work. Sure. We've tried it and it, Maintains a very nice low temperature, very steady in there, and we, we dried some herbs and they, and they came out perfect. And the, to check the temperature, you have a set of... Oh yeah, there's, the, way that, the way that part works, you, you can, can see, see right, right over here, here. There's, there's a, a sensor, sensor wire that plugs in, in and a little sensor that's sitting right now, right, right there by the uh, sun oven's normal uh, thermometer. I'm still experimenting about where that ought to be, you know, sure. in, in there for uh, doing this. But for all... For the work that you've done, I guess within what one or two percent of being about as perfectly. Safe I'm really right? happy with it. Yeah. Now, yeah. what I'm doing now, and we can this will be the segue into the next one to look at, is is the one disadvantage to this is pretty complicated and and you know a uh, little bit expensive to build. And I was trying to it's just when I post started posting this uh, in the group, it was so popular. Everybody wants one. And they say, gee, I want one, but if they knew what I'd, ha what I'd have to charge, they, they wouldn't want one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm trying to figure out, and I, oh, I should back up a little, because when I first started to build this, I wanted to build it really simple, but, but the, the problem really was the linear actuator that does the lift. That requires a lot of power and requires the more complexity. So the one we're, I'm trying to build now is not going to have any of the electronics. It's just going to have a real simple a motor and a solar panel is all it's going to be, and I've built solar uh, panel trackers that work that way and if i can just overcome the the lift and the weight of the of the sun oven i'm almost there nice nice and uh uh i'm very familiar with a lot of box ovens probably about 15 or 20 <laughs> in my collection and uh this tr the tracker platform looks like it would fit just about every one that i have i can't think of any that are that are larger than the footprint of the sun oven at least uh, top to bottom
And it could be uh, wider without a problem. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, I know the Solar Arm Society Sport. That's uh, that's shorter. It would be a little wider, but it would, it would snug up there. The uh, Sun Taste, the cork uh, bodied one, would fit in there. Um, yeah, there might need to be some changes. You know, this has that post that, that goes into the socket oh, where yeah. the leg would be, so there might be a different way to attach a different oven. Maybe if it came out like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah there's all... A lot of possibilities there. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to move over and see the, 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 the one that's under, uh, under development. Yes, if that's okay. Okay. So here's the new one under development. Yes. This works on the same principle, except that instead of... Uh, these indicator, I mean, the uh, sensor solar panels uh, driving relays that feed more voltage into motors. This is set up where these drive the motors themselves, direct. And there's nothing that goes, the only thing that's here is these solar panels and the wiring that connects them to their respective motors. Sure. There's, the only switches that are involved are, are a limit switch for the, for the tilt, so it has a, you know, a range that it travels in. The rotation has no limits. So it, this is a working prototype. If I move it like this right now, It's oh, yeah. slowly uh, going back to where it wanted to be. Yep. Yeah, and you, you limit that angle of the tilt so you don't have lasagna in your front yard. <laughs> I, I've dumped my poor sun oven three times already. <laughs> it's all been there, and we will all be there again. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, and the beauty of this is there's like, this is fewer parts. Just, yeah. You know, and... Uh, I, I, can, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's nothing in there. <laughs> the other ones are loaded yeah. with relay, so I, I won't be tilted or... You know, uh, there's just, just nothing there. there. Yeah, it, it, it's really it's a couple pieces of plywood, a couple of wheels, three motors, and a, some solar panels, and that's it. And, yeah, you know, yeah. there's no compli no real complicated skills in putting it together, and I think people could do this. You sure. Know? Uh, so I'm really excited about it. Well, and and ultimately you could scale it up. You just have a little, maybe a little bigger like rod there for the weight, mm -hmm. uh, a little larger platform, but the same the wheels that just would go out another few inches or something. I mean, uh, it's. I mean, my impression is, this is it. I yeah. mean, how much? How, how you can't really get any fewer parts. Won't have any switches. I have an idea where this these do better if like if there was a sheet right here of, of, of a shade that would shade this panel. But sure. So I would. I was. I'm thinking about having little hinged ones where you could. That would be your switch. You could. You could oh, uh, it would. It would shade the panels when you don't want it to track. And you'd lift it; it would provide that extra shade you need when you do. Sure. You know that'd be a real easy thing to, to incorporate in this design. Oh yeah. Well, now and for those on the worldwide Facebooks and that are deep into solar cooking, uh, what are the plans to uh, do a kind of an open source thing? I, I, I'm 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 just doing this to help. You know, I, I would just love to be able to make this available to more people because it's so much fun. Sure. It, it's so great to be able to set up your your oven and just forget it. And when you come back, it's been following the sun all day long, you know, yep. and, and uh, it's just so satisfying, you know. I, I want to share that. Yeah. Well, and the, the temperature control one, that was the recent innovation mm -hmm. where, I mean, I can say that the chatter on the Facebook was utter excitement yeah. just for the sake of there's so many things where you don't want it to cook too hot, and there are some things you want it to, to you're not even cooking. You're like drying herbs or, or you're pasteurizing water. Where you, mm -hmm. where if you don't need to bring it to boil, why? When you know it hits that point. Sure, sanitizing uh, cash. Or, yeah, know, yeah, or, yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Money laundering. I mean, it's just it's 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 uh, just so simple, straightforward. You say like this is there's no intermediary. This is just going direct to the just dryers. direct. Yeah. And you know, the other one's probably got you've got the box there so that you can add, add the like the charging and mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. So, so that's where like that's like the full service. Yes. Uh, machine. That's the deluxe version. Yeah. This is your bare bones. There's an interesting thing where uh, in in what in certain ways this has some preference to it because when it's working with the relays, it's more of a step function. It has to uh, build up enough voltage to move it, and this will will to that extent too. Although, uh, with the two motors and two powers competing with each other as the voltage is declining the motors are still running just slower but the relays just shut off completely sure so you get a little more uh, a little more sensitivity maybe uh possibly you sure know? well now and as far as parts uh i mean i'm looking at these and i'm seeing four or five different panels i mean there's just just little solar panels mm -hmm. you could probably get you might be able to get like lawn ornaments and and hook them up right i mean yeah. i'm just thinking in terms oh. of the uh, mm -hmm. My simple mind, where okay, could I replicate this? <laughs> yeah, that, that, it, it's just the, having the right combination of the motor and the panel. 
that work uh, the right way. I t I, I've just found, I've just been experimenting. I just, sure. I just got a bunch of different panels and I just try things, you know. Sure. I don't know how to do the math. To fit, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there meets the road. It has to work when you try it. So exactly. I just go right to that. You know? Well, and you've got stuff like uh, like uh, dials and stuff so you can tell like the temperature setting for that. Yeah. Where you can mm -hmm. see you want it to not quite boil like 95 centigrade or or you want it to dry, so you said it to, well, it's like 170 Fahrenheit, I think is what I've I've uh, heard for drying herbs. So it doesn't cook the herbs, it actually right. preserves things. So, uh, so I mean, it's all covered. It's all covered. Everything yeah. you need for solar cooking, solar drying, all sorts of things. Fun stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, let's uh, let's pull the, the other sun flash here and yeah, talk a little bit about the history yeah, with the right. sun flash. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll just do that. All right. Okay, the sun flash. This is how we met. Yes. <laughs> this, this, this is also how I got involved in, in solar cooking in, you know, thirty years ago. Yeah. And uh, and when? Did, how did you? How did you get it? Uh, uh, mail order, and I don't remember. I either bought it probably either from Real Goods or Jade Mountain. Those were the two places okay. I got all my stuff from you know, when we first okay. got here. And uh, I came in a box. I had to put it all together, and. Uh, and this thing has been up here outside, sitting out here all year round for 30 years. And it's still as shiny as it was when it was new. I had to fix, we, it had blew over in a, in a storm. I had to re-weld the, the frame one time. Sure. But other than that, it's just as good as it was. On, you know, can you imagine, you know, how many products can you yeah. buy and have them sit outside for 30 years and it still bakes uh, yeah, you know, chicken? Mean, <laughs> and this one, it's, uh, I remember the, the C. Bear who came up with the design also the it's also co-designed. Uh, Lynn Yoder, you know, I kind of looked him up. Uh, they designed with coal there to make it a little more stable because these are like sails; they'll catch the wind. Um, but uh, it comes with the sand, or came with the sand. It's no longer being produced that, that we know of. In fact, we are the only two that have <laughs> that we know of. But the base actually has holes where you can put stakes in, so it's as stable as it can be. A lot of uh, the the person I got mine from, they just had it on a permanent post in the uh -huh. yard, and the same deal. They had it 20 plus years. And it, it looks exactly like this. Yeah. You've got some of the, the steel uh, nuts that have a little bit of rust, but guess what? They're holding it together. Yeah. <laughs> and the unique thing with the bowls, or it has the bowls. Do you have the bowls handy? Uh, yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Because this topic came up uh, in, when I was up in Seattle with Paul Hedrick. He said, there are a lot of cookers that have the flat reflectors, and the trouble when you have like uh, like an oven bag or a flat, or flat uh, corningware or whatever, you know, the glass, mm -hmm. is that the, a lot of the light can reflect off of it, but so long as the reflection is going straight in, uh, it generally yeah. just will not reflect off, and so mm -hmm. it really does help concentrate it. So uh, I feel like that's, uh, I mean, I had no idea. I just thought, well, that's a good way as a heat trap, but it's also it also makes it more efficient for getting all the light into the cooking space. And we love how easy this is to aim and, and to tilt. You know, it's just... Oh, it's so awesome. easy compared to some certain other ovens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I had to loosen this one up. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Earlier. That's me. This yeah, we love it. Things. We love it. <laughs> Very good. And then you made the, the replica. Mm -hmm. uh, and how long did that take, and how did you go about that? that? Uh, it took me just a few days. I, I had to, I traced one of these and, and brought it to my mm -hmm. other place and just uh, cut out all the little sections. I, I was kind of expecting it to turn into more of a problem. <laughs> I didn't quite get that right, but it does work pretty well. It, uh, and I built, and then once I had the reflector, I, then I had to figure out how to build a frame for it. And it was really just uh, stuff laying around, whatever I could get my hands on. And I liked the design. And I just got lucky, I think. We did a side by side. I don't remember. We did. We put a, a chicken in this one and that one, and had them right going side by side all day long, and they both came out fine. Uh, <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Okay. All right.
All right, this is a water gauge. It's not uh, not working right at the moment because there's no water in the tank. But if there were, this would indicate the level in the tank. Oh. And if the pump were running, filling the tank, this light right here would be on. Okay. This is um, the irrigation timing system. I you know started up here using those uh, little battery timers, but I don't like having to buy batteries, you know, because they're toxic. So this runs off our solar system, and there's some 12 volt timers here that work 12 volt uh, valves, and that works all the irrigation for the ranch. Yeah. Okay. And the the bottom bottle bottle bottoms here, that's uh, just to protect. That's just yeah, it keeps the elements it, off the okay. connections and Great. whatnot. And this is going this is going down to the down to the stream. No, the this river? is this is uh, uh, watering the vegetable garden right here, oh, and, okay. the, and the the citrus trees and the apple trees up there. And okay, uh, so it's grabbing it from the tank that you're already storing yeah. things. In. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Great. Okay. All right. Uh, we, we, we should go look at the other water gauge. Yes. This is the water level gauge for the main water system, the drinking water system. And that system is very widespread. There's a pump, there's a spring and a pump way down in a canyon, and there are tanks way up on this hill. Wow. The water's coming in. I don't have my glasses. At 45 psi. Sure. It's coming out at. Uh, 200. You can see the little piston right here. I was going to say, so this is the pump? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? In the spring. Sure. You, if you look right in there, this is the little piston. You see that? It's going away now. It'll come back. All day, 24 hours a day. And this allows me to monitor that whole system. And it took me years to finally get something that worked up here for the, I could not, I looked really hard to buy something and I just couldn't find it. So uh, the way this one works is uh, on the uphill, on the uphill pipe coming from the pump that's down in the canyon, uh, there's, a, there's a pressure switch on that line. And it's, when the pump shifts back and forth, it's a piston, a gravity powered piston pump. That causes a little ripple in the water pressure, and this, this the switch is so sensitive it'll make this light blink every time that pump does a stroke. So when I look, and, and then there's, and then on the downhill line from the tanks, there's ten more water pressure uh, switches that each corresponds to a different level of, of the pressure that would be present at that, those levels in the tank. So when I look at this gauge, I know how much water is in my tanks. They're full right now. And every time that blinks, I know that my pump is running and I know how fast my pump is running. So at a glance, I know the entire status of the water system just from something that just sits right here. Yeah, yeah. It's got a, a one foot by one foot footprint. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, and, and what powers it is these little solar panels up here. And uh, I call this a, a static tracker. <laughs> Because you notice there's one, there's, there's no north one, but there's one for each other angle. And if it's, if it's pointing more, uh, you know, south, it's more of a flat angle. If it's towards the end of the day, it's a steeper angle, you see? So it's kind of doing that angle thing. And, and so this thing stays lit all day, all day. I used to have it battery powered, but it bothered me. The light, I didn't like to see the light at night. You know? If my water's not there at night, I'm not going to do anything about it until the morning, you know, so... I don't so, care. So this is a tracking without the, the tracker itself having to move anything. Exactly, because it just, it just anticipates all the different yeah. levels of sun, what angle it ought to have. And, uh... Oh, man. <laughs> okay, I can't think <laughs> of anything else to ask for that. I mean, it's, it's simplicity itself. Yeah. Yeah, and you got the valves down there to control what? That just, that's just to shut it off if, if something, oh. yeah. Okay. It, I was just kind of lucky because the uphill and downhill pipes were right nearby here where I wanted to put this gauge so I could just tap into those two lines and uh, and get it. It's an interesting uh, thing that some people might not realize how you how you would calibrate. The calibrating it is the hardest. But you have to. You have to, so what you do is you go up to the water tanks. You put a you put a clear plastic pipe right alongside the water tank and put marks on it for the ten yep. levels. Sure. Then you turn off the tank and you just fill that little pipe. And people don't realize you're going to get the same pressure from that one little pipe. <laughs> As you would from the whole tank, you know? it could be Lake Tahoe, you know, and it wouldn't make any difference. It's only only varies on the depth of the water, you know. So uh, all, all I had, that's all I had, that's how I did it, and uh, got each one of these little uh, lights calibrated to the right amount. 
And the, oh, the other thing this tells me, if someone turns the water on somewhere, the level's going to drop just for a little while while the water's running, and then it'll come back up. Sure. If our water pump, pressure pump for the cabin is on, four of them come off and they vibrate because of the way the pump works. So I, I can look at this and I kind of know if there's a, a, suddenly where there was a leak, I would be alerted to it right sure. away. Sure. You know? Wow. It's, it's, it's a complete tracking system all in a post. You need information up here. It, yeah. there was, I really didn't like it when we get up in the morning, you turn on the water and nothing comes out. You know, it's just not good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Next item. Uh, you want to see the power? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next up. Okay. Let's go to the right of it, actually. All right. Where do I go? Here? Just saying, yeah, right there's good. All right. Yeah. Okay, what's this all about? This is where most of our power comes from. There's, this is a water heating panel here for heating the water for the outdoor kitchen. This runs the water heater pump, circulation pump. This is the power for the outdoor kitchen, and it has uh, a tracker on it and, it, and it sweeps this section of the sky, which is really uh, unshaded and, and wide open, and it gets, gets this really good electricity. So this has water and electrical yes, in one spot. Yes, these are electric photovoltaic panels down here. And then, uh, so then this power from here runs underground and goes over next to the cabin, and now we can kind of see where the, sure. I'll show you where that goes. And, uh, oh, another thing I can show you here if you want to see that. What's that? Right there. If it's winter time and there's no solar water heating available, I can shift this valve right here from sun to fire, light a small fire right there, uh, and the pump will circulate the hot water from there back up into that tank, and we can heat the water with a small bonfire. So that's that's copper piping. Huh? That's copper, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. So direct heat. That's sort of the backup. You know, yeah. For, yeah. We don't use it that much, but uh, it's, and it's only in the we only use it in the winter time. Sure. Okay. All right. Let's go over here. Oh, that's an interesting shot because the shade creates uh, this kind of diamond shaped thing. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, all right. There's two more solar panels up on the roof right above us. And all that power comes right into here. And these are the charge controllers. And also the the 12 volt DC uh, load controls right here. It's this things that are only using 12 volts get their power from this side of the the house. Then these are the battery mm -hmm. store the power. And then over here are two three three thousand watt inverters that convert the power to uh, 110 volts. This one's for the cabin. This one's for the garage. That's our power system. Now explain the springs, because that. Was oh yeah, uh, this. The, these are pistons that, that are made for greenhouse vents, and they have wax in them that expands when it gets hot, and it lifts these pistons that lifts the door up the, just enough to let it vent and keep the batteries cool. I put the springs there to help. The, I felt sorry for those pistons. This, <laughs> this door is heavy, and it turns out they're not necessary at all. Uh, this, these have a lot of force to them. They can lift a, a lot of weight. Sure. Really. Remarkable and uh, it ends up being hydraulic. It just has to be wax. Yeah. 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 Yeah Wow, yeah when I tested it, it was really fun. It was uh, I think it was a kind of a chilly day I took my wife's hair dryer plugged it into the inverter stuck it in here and closed the door <laughs> To heat it up in there because I didn't have a hot it wasn't a hot day, you know, and I wanted to see if it worked <laughs> And it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah So it's so basically it's that solar power too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely I mean, <laughs> There's, there's got to be more. The hot water flap. We can show. <laughs> yes. This is the collector for the cabin's hot water system, silver hot water system. And uh, the, the problem I started having was uh, on, a, on hot days, it was getting so hot in there that uh, 
it was getting hot. The water was getting hotter than, than was really a good idea to, to have. I had it set up with a thermostat so the circulation pump wouldn't pump, would stop pumping when it reached a certain temperature. And the darn thing would thermosiphon on me, so even though I even though it technically shouldn't, because the water has to go downhill first, and that's supposed to be the biggest no-no of building a thermosiphon solar hot water system. You don't want any downward run, you know, slopes on your on your upward uh, hot water feed, you know. And uh, so I was I'd come out here, put pieces of cardboard on it to you know shade it off a little bit, and that got to be kind of a pain. So I I fiddled around, got an, I, I experimented with this. I used it. I was back at the I was using a couple of empty mayonnaise jars and, <laughs> and, I, and a couple of pumps and I had float switches in them at the time and the float switches turned out to be the big problem. They, they kept uh, going haywire on me. So I wound up using bigger water containers and uh, there's a pump in each water container and a, and a tube that connects the two outputs of the pumps together. So it, whichever pump runs, runs the water from one into another and I set it up with the two mayonnaise jars back you know, in my garage just building it and I had it lifting the garbage can lid up and down you know and you pump the water up to there but the float switches were the problem you got a float switch trying to tell it what the pump when to stop when the pump when the thing gets empty you know I wound up timing how long it takes and using a timer and it worked a lot better got rid of the float switches so what happens is if this reaches a certain temperature it'll trigger a relay that'll and I'll do this manually and You'll see that little green light goes on there. That means it's going to close the flap. And if you want to look around the back, you can see what's happening. There we go. Keep this little remote control right by the kitchen window there and in the morning when we're making some coffee we just push the button and I like to close it at the night just to keep you know if the wind comes up or something. Sure. So I uh, just push the button and it'll open up heat the water. Okay. Ain't that cool? That's the best. That's the best. And the neat thing I found out with the Harless Walters cooker which has a mineral oil and they're basically the same array uh -huh. of the copper pipes. It really doesn't you really don't have to point it any one way or Oh yeah, 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 right. If the pipes right. are far enough apart the mm -hmm. the one pipe isn't gonna shade the next and I used uh, this this was the one that got hit by the tree and it broke the glass. Uh, yeah. This is polycarbonate. Works it's it's a great substitute. So much lighter, easier to deal with than, sure. than the glass. It's got ash all over it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Break out the dust. That's <laughs> true.